So some of the more frequent questions I regularly get asked on YouTube are which is the best broker, how much do they cost, and which one am I using? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about three different brokers that I actually use on a day-to-day -day basis while investing as a British person from the UK. Now, whether you're a complete novice or an advanced investor, I've got you covered in this video. These three brokers all offer very different aspects, and we're gonna talk about why I like them, what are the pros and cons, how much they cost in terms of charges, and then finally leaving you with my verdict and which one is the best for a beginner, an intermediate, and a advanced investor. Now, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing but remember this is just my personal opinion and it is not financial advice. Now if you do want to help me out and help this video rank please do make sure that like button is turned blue. It's massively underestimated how great it feels just turning that like button blue. If you are looking for a broker and from the UK one of the ones I'm going to talk about in just a second is eToro and if you sign up via the link on the pinned comment you get access to the LWT eToro chat room for life if you go via that link deposit and make a trade. Now when looking for an investing app or a new broker, especially if you're very new, there's many to choose from. When planning for this video, I had literally dozens of choices and I had to narrow it down to three because simply put, people do not have five hours to listen to me ramble on YouTube. But I thought it's best to narrow it down to three different brokers that I still use today and can confidently recommend. I didn't want to sit there and slate free trade because I don't use them. And spoiler alert, they're not on this list. But I didn't want to slate a company that I'm not using. I'd rather focus on the companies I am using, things they could improve on, some of the cons, and also go through their pricing. Because believe it or not, if you are a new investor, the pricing really does matter. Not all brokers are actually free, even though they state they are. And we're going to cover that in this video. Kicking off first with eToro. If you are a regular returner to the channel, you'll know that I do talk about eToro a lot. We work very close in partnership, but this opinion is not biased. Over the last year or so, many brokers have approached me asking to work together, and in full transparency, I would only work with one that I genuinely use. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say eToro is my main broker because it's not, but there is one on this list that is, and I'm gonna talk about that at the end of the video. But we do have many videos on eToro itself, so you can go and check them out if you are more interested in it. And other than getting access to the LWT eToro chat room, there's many more pros when it comes to using this as a broker. First thing is, it's very easy to set up. You simply download the application, go through the steps, and you can even use your bank card to deposit. Now, to many new investors, this might just sound like the normal aspect where you use a debit card or credit card to deposit to your broker account. But when you look at more serious brokerages like Interactive Brokers, and yes, they're on this list, you can't deposit with a debit card. And again, we'll talk about that in just a second. But sticking with eToro, one of the biggest features that I think they have is the social aspect. You can go on there, you can make your profile public or private. But if someone's profile is public, you can go in there, see what their portfolio currently consists of. There's a Twitter style interface where you can talk to them directly, see what their thoughts and opinions are. And that leads on to their biggest feature, in my opinion, especially if you're a new investor, the popular investor and copy trader. Now, once you reach certain criteria and eToro sort of give you the nod of approval, you can then allow people to copy your portfolio. Now, this is great because you can go and find an investor that's way ahead of you in terms of learning and you can even mimic their portfolio. You can allocate a certain amount of money to them and as they buy and sell, this amount of money you've allocated will automatically follow their buys and sells. I call it the lazy way of investing and as long as you do your due diligence and pick the right person, you can actually grow your money quite well without having to do an actual thing. And again, I've done a video on copy trading. So you go on YouTube and type in LWT, copy trading, eToro, or something along them lines, and it will come up. I also have a portfolio that's publicly available for you to go and check out if you want. Just look at LWT trading on eToro, and you can see what my buys and sells are. And we actually just broke 50 copiers, which is quite a big milestone, believe it or not. So thank you to everybody who put faith into me in the Coffee to 100K challenge. Now, eToro's initial premium does fluctuate from time to time depending on demand but currently it is at 200 US dollars so not a lot of money to get your investing journey started looking at the fees of eToro it is quite ambiguous because they are one of the brokers that advertise commission free trading and in life nothing is for free now if you found this video you're probably only looking at stock shares equities which are all the same thing just different names but if you're looking at stocks themselves let's have a little breakdown into the fees. Now, provided when you're buying a stock, let's say Apple, and you're not using any leverage, then yes, in theory, it would be free. 
the only thing you would pay is what we call a spread. Now with eToro and majority of these commission free investing apps, of course they've got to make money somewhere. And the way they do it is on the spread. If you're a more seasoned investor, you will know what a bid and an ask is, and that is basically the buy or sell price. If you go on eToro and you click buy and sell, you can see the prices are very different. As a rough rule of thumb, the actual price of Apple in this instance will probably be somewhere down the middle. And if you buy, eToro make that little bit extra margin there. And if you sell or short it, they make a little bit extra margin there as well. So in theory on paper, yes, there's no transaction fee, but eToro do make up for it elsewhere. And that's not really a negative with eToro because they are sort of more focused on the new investor and they want to entice people into their program. But this is the same with Robinhood, it's the same with 212, and majority of these brokers that offer free commission trades. Now, if you're looking at more crypto, eToro do make decent money on the spreads there. For example, if you wanna buy Bitcoin, the average spread is 0.75% whenever you buy and sell definitely not cheap. Now, if you're looking at buying and selling CFDs, contracts for difference, my advice is just don't because this is where brokers tend to make most of their money. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But CFDs are very, very high risk. You don't own the underlying stock and majority of investors. In fact, I think it's like 60 plus percent on eToro lose money when trading CFDs. So stick to the stock, stick to the long-term path and you are lowering that risk. But if you want to trade CFDs, it's 0.09% plus a bid and ask spread. Now let's have a little look at the pros and cons of using eToro as a investing app from the UK. Some of the pros include, it's very easy to set up, download, deposit via your card, and you're good to go. I think the social aspect as well of being able to see what other investors are doing helps dramatically, especially if you're a new investor. The copy portfolios is something I really do love to do. And in my second eToro account, I do copy some people there because I just don't have time to keep on top of everything. And if you wanna know who I am copying on that account, let me know down in the comments and maybe we can do a video on it. They have some very basic fundamentals when it comes to looking at a stock to invest in, some very good charting, and also some very cool portfolio features where you can see how your portfolio is diversified and how much you have allocated to any one stock, which not every broker actually has, and I can't fathom why. Another big pro is they have an FX department, so if you wanna buy and sell pounds, dollars, yen or anything crazy like that then they do have that fx facility as well which again some of the other options do not have one of the cons for me really is in generic terms if you are a new investor it's not the easiest platform to get around but i'm definitely no tech wizard and if i can get around it i'm pretty sure you can because you can use a keyboard and you found this video and another con for eToro really is more if you're an advanced or intermediate investor they don't have every stock listed on their platform Majority of stocks, your Apples and your Coca-Colas, and even some of your stocks like AMC, of course, they have them. Some of the bigger names are on there without a shadow of a doubt. But if you wanna trade some higher risk, low cap stocks that no one's ever heard of, it might not be on eToro's platform. Now for me personally, I do like the odd SPAC or speculation play as well, and sometimes they're just not on eToro. Now eToro is working on adding a lot more, but I think this is actually a defense line for eToro so that their new investors don't YOLO into some new startup company that started out in someone's basement with leverage and they lose everything they've got. I think eToro is actually proactively looking after its new investors there by not adding every single bag of shit stock on the stock market. Now, as a whole, I do love this company. I've got two different accounts there. My wife has an account there. My family, pretty much everyone has an account there. So I think eToro is a solid app. It's a huge company. Their support's quite good. And again, if you sign up via that link down on the pinned comment, you do get chat room access for life. Now, before we move on to the second broker, remember that I'm gonna give you my thoughts and thesis at the end of the video of which one I think might be best for you. But 212 Trading or Trading 212 is another broker that I've been using for a long time. Now, Trading 212 also offer commission-free trades and they also have a very clean cut platform. In fact, I think their platform is slightly cleaner than eToro's but they do have a hell of a lot less features. But in full transparency, one of the biggest things that scares me right now with Trading212 is they have suspended and created a waiting list for new accounts. There's rumors that it's because that they have a backlog and they can't handle that many clients, 
but I also think there might be more to meet the eye. Whenever a broker limits trading or limits new accounts, it always leaves me with a bit of a weird taste in my mouth, but I am still using Trading212 on a daily basis, and I am adding funds to it on a regular basis, as I am with eToro and Interactive Brokers. And yes, you guessed it, Interactive Brokers is the third broker I'm gonna be talking about. But sticking with 212, what are the fees? Because again, it's a commission-free broker. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. After you've deposited 2,000 into your account, Trading212 is gonna charge you a whopping 0.7% on every deposit you make thereafter. That's quite a big number. eToro, for example, charges you 0.5%, but trading 212 is a bit of a high number once you break that 2,000 threshold. And I think everybody should be regular investing and eventually will get over that. So it's a bit of a hefty fee there. Now, as I mentioned, trading 212 do offer free trading, but that's not really the case. There is a spread. Sometimes the spread is a little bit higher than eToro's, but not by much. They're also a bit more sneaky on how they represent it. Again, on eToro, you simply just click buy and sell and you can sort of see where that spread is. But on 212, you have to physically go out of your buy order and then go back into your sell. And if the stock is open and moving, it's quite hard to see the exact price that quickly. Now, speaking of spreads here, there's something I really wanna clarify. When these brokers offer commission-free trades, of course, they're making money on this spread. Now, a good way of seeing this is if you have a live stock price. Something like TradingView is something I use quite regularly, but if you have a broker that offers something called level two, you can see what the buy and sell is going off at as it happens instantaneously, provided you're paying for live data. One thing I have noticed, especially with trading 212, is they can lag a little bit. Now this could work in your favor, but most times it's gonna work against you. So for example, if I see a current stock that is trading at $100 on the nose, trading 212 might be slightly out there. And if the stock is very volatile, something like AMC, the spreads can be quite a lot of percent. So you could buy in with a higher entry than the stock has ever actually traded at. So it is something worth noting here that try and get a second screener up, something with an independent price, and then you can see what the price of that stock you wanna buy is in real terms, and then what Trading212 or eToro are actually offering you. Now, of course, if you're looking at the long-term investing route, these small one or two pips or one or two cents are not really gonna make too much of a difference. But if you're looking at short-term investing and volatile plays, it can make a hell of a lot of difference. And when it comes to executing on 212, a lot of times I've been sat there waiting for even up to hours to be executed on a trade. Even though the market's open, even though I can see volume is going off, sometimes trading 212's executions are just not that good. eToro is not exactly perfect either, but eToro's executions are much faster than 212's. The pros and the cons is it does have a very nice platform, in my opinion, much more clean cut than eToro's, but you don't have that social aspect, you don't have that copy trading portfolio. So again, if you're more of an intermediate investor, 212 might be a bit better for you. They do have more stock options there as well in terms of buying lower caps or SPACs. But again, if you're a new investor, I still think eToro is probably better. And in my opinion, a better platform overall. But there's no harm in diversifying, which is why I have both. Some of the cons with 212 are they are not accepting new clients for over four months now. There's rumors that's gonna change very soon, hence the reason I'm keeping it on the list. It is a broker I do like on a day-to-day -day basis. Their app is very, very clean. And again, they take credit card payments, so it's very easy to set up. And like eToro, it's a download, plug in and go type of investing app. So if you're putting a gun to my head and I had to rank them, I'd say eToro is a little bit better than 212, but it really comes down to personal preference. Now we're moving into the big leagues and we're gonna talk about interactive brokers. One of the biggest names in finance in terms of stock brokers in the world. Hedge funds and investors worldwide have been using interactive brokers for a long time. And let's be clear here, there's not many hedge funds using eToro or 212 or Weeble or Robinhood to buy and sell stocks. But a lot of them are using interactive brokers. It's more of a big boy type of broker and there is some pros and cons, but it really comes down to you because on paper, it's much more expensive. Now, right off the bat, if you have less than $10,000 in your account, I really don't think Interactive Brokers is gonna be for you. Also, if you're not really that much of an active trader, again, it's probably not gonna be for you. But hear me out because one day it might be the perfect broker for you as your account grows. Now, there's literally fees everywhere and many different tiers that you can pick when it comes to making a fee structure. And this is where Interactive Brokers sort of has a bit of an issue with the new investor because they don't really know what fee structure to go for, but I'm sort of gonna try and iron that out here. 
If you have an inactivity fee, i.e. you don't make any trades or you don't meet the criteria, you can have an inactivity fee per month of up to 20 US dollars for doing nothing with your account. You don't make enough fees, they'll charge you something to make sure they're getting paid. Now, this is where Interactive Brokers gets quite good. If you have a decent sized account and you pick the fixed tier section, then your fees on a say a 30,000 US dollar investment, I think it's up to 50,000, you'll pay a simple $6 transaction fee and that's it. But there's no huge spread, that's it. Whereas if you were buying this on eToro or 212 for 50,000 US dollars, trust me, you'd be paying a hell of a lot more than $6 in terms of a fee. Another fee that they do have as well is market data. If you want live charting and live market data, this can cost you a literal fortune, anywhere from one to $10 per market. So if you want the UK, the US and Canada, that could work out to be $30 in itself. I don't know the exact market data fees, but I'm sure you can go and find them. But I think it'll be around about $20 minimum per month you would pay for live market data. Now, some of the pros of interactive brokers. First thing is, if you've got a decent sized account, you have a little bit of a safety net there, thinking that you're working with one of the biggest companies in terms of brokers in the world. You get live prices, so there's no bid offer spread. If you have a decent sized account, again, the fees are much, much lower. And one of the biggest things, in my opinion, is you get super fast executions once you get familiar with the platform. In some cases, literally instantaneous. Now, some of the cons here is if you are a new investor, it's an absolute minefield of a platform to work through. It's took me literal years to get used to using this platform. But once you get set up, it's a brilliant place to make your investments. But it is an absolute minefield and you need to spend a couple of hours a day for a couple of weeks every single day to get used to all their features. Even today, every couple of weeks, I find a new feature on their platform that I wish I knew about a couple of months ago because they do have this great platform but it is designed more for serious investors who know what they're doing. And the biggest downside of Interactive Brokers is the setup. You can't just download an app and plug in and go, upload your IDs, take a picture of yourself and you're good to go. You have to do a full application, source of wealth, lots of paperwork. It takes a few days for you to get verified. And the biggest thing of all, you can't do a debit card or credit card transaction. You've got to physically wire the money to them, then wait for it to clear. So you're looking at realistically at least a week from start to finish to set up. But once it's done, if you have got a decent size amount of money, you don't want to be using a credit card anyway to deposit because it's quite expensive in the long run, especially going on any commission-free broker. Now, it might sound like I'm slamming Interactive Brokers here, but I want to be very clear. Interactive Brokers is where majority of my investments are held. I have upwards of over 100K there, and it's a broker that I have got used to over the years, even though I think if I was making a very quick trade, I'd probably look more at eToro and 212 because I can deposit the cash there instantaneously and make that trade. But when it comes to long-term investing, buying stocks like Coca-Cola, BP, or Apple, if you're gonna be holding them for a long time, Interactive Brokers just feels a lot more safer to me because it's not this new broker that's just came about over the last couple of years. They've been around for literal decades. Now, I know this video has been quite long-winded, but which is my favorite broker out of the three of them? Now, again, I wanna be very clear here. I picked these three because it's three that I use on a daily basis, and I'm not here saying any of them are bad. All of them are very good, hence the reason I still use them, and I still deposit to all of them on a regular basis. And on that as well, if you are watching this far and you wanna see what I'm buying and selling in terms of stocks, you can check out Patreon down in the description. If there's some spaces there in the WhatsApp group, you can message me directly and see what I'm buying and selling as it happens. I also post a watch list there from time to time and even talk about stocks I'm looking at buying at a certain price way before I actually pull the trigger and buy it. Now, which broker is the best? In my opinion, and again, not financial advice, eToro is probably the best overall because they are quite cheap, their executions are great, their platform is growing, their service is great. And again, of course, the chat room if you sign up via that link in the pinned comment. But jokes aside, I think if you are a new investor and you're probably more of a new or intermediate investor if you're watching here on YouTube, I think eToro is a one box ticks all, at least in the beginning. As you move up and your account gets bigger, it wouldn't hurt diversifying into maybe 212, which is literally the same steps I did. And then you could have your money in two brokers and have that safety net. Because in the UK right now, if one of these brokers did go bust, you'd only get up to 85,000 pounds in terms of compensation if they did fail. But either way, in my opinion, get as many brokerage accounts as you can. I do think eToro is probably the best for the new investors and the intermediate investors. And if you've got over say 25,000 US dollars, which would put you over a thing called PDT in the States, then look at something like Interactive Brokers 
as a broker as well. Because once you start trading with decent size volume, interactive brokers is much cheaper than the other two mentioned. Just remember commission free trades are actually not free. There's always someone paying the piper somewhere and usually nine times out of 10, it's me and you, the investor. Now, if you're watching this far, usually in the videos, we have something called a code word, which is where you can just help me out by commenting that word down below. And the code word for this video is going to be cheese. It's gonna confuse a lot of people. So just start typing cheese down in the comment section. Make sure you've liked this video. And again, if you wanna check out eToro, Deposit just simply $200, make a trade, and you get access to the chat room via the link in the pinned comment. Be safe out there. If you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments. Take care. Peace.